Before the end of the legislative session in Albany, state lawmakers took steps to limit the taking of horseshoe crabs along New York's waters. The move is in response to the crab being a coveted resource for biomedical purposes, as a protein in the blood of the animal can be utilized to detect the presence of harmful chemicals in products that are being developed for medical purposes. For more on the potential restrictions, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Adrian Esposito, Executive Director of the Citizens Campaign for the Environment. Welcome to the show, Adrian. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. So for starters, why should listeners care about the horseshoe crab? Well, the horseshoe crab is actually one of the most ancient species left on our planet. In fact, they've existed for over 350 million years and we think they should be allowed to continue to exist. Uh, this is a species that basically hasn't changed at all in millions of years. And they are a key part of the food web, particularly in our marine environment, but also for migrating uh, shoreline birds. For instance, when the horseshoe crabs come out of the deep Atlantic Ocean and crawl up onto the beach during spring full moons, they lay thousands and thousands of eggs. Those eggs are relied upon as a food source by birds that are making a transatlantic migratory passageway. They land, they feed on the eggs, and that gives them the energy and the food they need to continue along their migration. Also, the horseshoe crab itself is a species that's eaten by sharks and turtles and other predators in the ocean. But beyond that, why should we, the question is also, why should we let it go extinct? Why should we continue old practices that are no longer necessary and allow a species to be wiped off the face of the planet? So you bring up the idea of the horseshoe crab becoming extinct. And during the assembly debate on this issue, the measures sponsor, Assembly Environmental Conservation Committee Chair Deborah Glick, brought up that the crab has become a threatened species, not necessarily in danger, but the population is heading in the wrong direction. Later in the conversation, though, a Republican assembly member from Long Island argued that the population is not necessarily decreasing and argued that, in fact, on the east end of Long Island, the population is increasing. So what is the current state of the horseshoe crab along New York's waters? Well, I watched the floor debate, and unfortunately, there's still a lot of misinformation out there. The facts tell us that back in 2009, the Atlantic uh, States Marine Fisheries uh, Con Commission established that the population was, quote unquote, good. That was a measure of standards. However, since 2009, it's been declining. So by 2019, just 10 years later, the standard now is down to poor. And where the population now has stayed at the level of poor from 2019 to 2024. So, you know, maybe where that East End legislator lives, they've seen a few more, but we don't go by that, right? We go by what is the count? What is the population? In New York, the populations have been declining since 2009. That's a good number of years. The state of Connecticut banned the taking of horseshoe crabs. That ban went into effect in October of last year. The state of New Jersey banned the taking of horseshoe crabs, and that went into effect in 2008. So states around the Northeast and certainly around New York are already being proactive and taking measures to protect the species because the numbers reflect the need to take action. So as I mentioned at the top, this is a coveted animal for its biomedical purposes, but is it taken for any other reasons? For example, is it utilized by fishermen for bait purposes? There's two reasons that horseshoe crabs are harvested. One is for biomedical purposes, although there has never been a biomedical harvesting permit given in the state of New York. And the second reason is by commercial fishermen who use the horseshoe crab to be chopped up and they use it for bait for a conch, also called whelk, and also for eels. So it's an antiquated practice that fishermen use this particular species, the horseshoe crab, as bait. We have never allowed the take of horseshoe crabs in New York State for the medical establishment. And in fact, 
there has been a very successful synthetic alternative created to use instead of the horseshoe crab blood. The horseshoe crab has a unique blue blood that has a component called LAL, which is simply used by the medical establishment to look for bacteria and bacteriological infections in medical equipment, such as uh, IV tubing and things like that. So now a synthetic alternative has been successfully used on the market. We're absolutely thrilled uh, to be able to announce that companies like Pfizer and Eli Lilly and other pharmaceutical companies are now all switching to the synthetical version of the blood rather than killing horseshoe crabs. In fact, I don't know if you saw, but a couple of weeks ago, the New York Times did a big article on Eli Lilly coming out publicly, pledging to not any longer kill horseshoe crabs for their blue blood, but rather to solely use the synthetic alternative. So we think that that we've come around a big corner in not allowing horseshoe crabs to be used for research purposes any longer, but rather to use the synthetic alternative, which has been proven now by major pharmaceutical companies to be successful. We don't want to hurt commercial fishermen. We love commercial fishermen. However, they've been using the horseshoe crab as bait for conch and whelk and eel for decades, 50, 60 years now. We need to find alternative bait for those species so we don't continue to deplete the horseshoe crab. Well, before we move on, let me reintroduce you for listeners just joining us. We're speaking with Adrian Esposito, Executive Director of the Citizens Campaign for the Environment. So in recognition of the desire to promote the horseshoe crab population, the state has uh, limited the annual harvest of horseshoe crabs in New York State to uh, 150,000 crabs. When you think about the best path forward, why is a complete ban on commercial harvesting the way to go as opposed to just reducing that current cap of 150,000? Is there a a middle ground between zero and 150,000? Well, we appreciate the DEC's work in working to reduce the amount of harvesting that's allowed in New York State. It is. It's a great step forward, but it's not working. So, you know, you have to continue to say to yourself, if a reduced harvest isn't working, we need to go to a ban. That's why New Jersey implemented their ban. That's why Connecticut implemented their ban. That's what is needed for the species to be able to reproduce. Uh, Look, the bottom line is the horseshoe crab is struggling, not only because of harvesting, but also because of loss of habitat. So, for instance, on Long Island, where I live, a lot of the shoreline is no longer sandy beaches. Horseshoe crab needs a sandy beach to come up out of the ocean, crawl onto the beach, lay their eggs, and then crawl back into the ocean. But as more and more areas have been developed, uh, you know, horseshoe crab can't come out of the water, jump over the bulkhead, and then land on a beach or someone's backyard and lay their eggs there. It doesn't work that way. So we've limited the amount of space for the horseshoe crab to be able to lay eggs and reproduce. So that is another reason why banning the take for harvesting is also important. We can't reproduce the uh, the needed habitat. It's already lost. But what we can do is take less of them out of the ocean so they have the opportunity opportunity to um, to gain back population. This legislation would continue to allow for the uh, harvesting of horseshoe crabs for, quote unquote, uh, bona fide scientific or educational purposes. And this could include uh, public or non-for-profit zoos and, and aquarium, as well as other possibilities as determined by rules and regulations. Are you comfortable with that carve out? We're comfortable with that. That is such a tiny bit. And we also know that such when uh, the nonprofits take it or the zoo, they're not killing the, the this creature, right? They're maintaining it. They're uh, allowing for public education to happen uh, through their holding of it. And that's important too. It's important for any species to be understood so we understand their habits and what we need to protect them in the long term. So we are comfortable with that. We don't have a problem with that. 
Well, as you mentioned earlier, there have been no permits issued uh, for taking of horseshoe crabs for uh, biomedical purposes. But uh, if you look at the companies and associations uh, that are registered to lobby on this bill, there are a lot of biomedical interests, which suggests that there is interest in harvesting these crabs for biomedical purposes in the future. Uh, Given that interest and some of the reservations that I've read about the promise of these synthetic alternatives, are you concerned at all about limiting the uh, potential for biomedical development in the future? No, I'm not concerned. And David, I agree. We were pretty surprised that every pharmaceutical company uh, really in America came into Albany and were lobbying rigorously against the bill. And the reason we're surprised is because, as we've both stated, there has not been a permit issued to those same pharmaceutical companies for harvesting horseshoe crabs here in New York waters. It hasn't happened. So for them to appear on the scene, they were just using it as a safety net, not as a need. So, you know, we just felt that was a bit uh, disingenuous. And they, you know, really reached out to every Senate and Assembly member that they could in a hardcore, uh, dramatic way. And to suggest that the environmental community, you know, is completely you know, immune to understanding the need in the medical field, I think on their part is just, it's just ridiculous. The bottom line is we can do both. We need to service the medical need, right? And and find out if this kind of equipment has any bacteria or bacteriological endotoxins. We can do that with the new synthetic. If Eli Lilly feels comfortable with it, I think you and I can feel comfortable with it. So, we have progressed as a society. We've progressed as, uh, you know, as people. And I think we realize now we just can't kill everything and decimate a species because we don't want to switch our practices. If this legislation becomes law and the population of horseshoe crabs is restored, is there a point at which you think it could be harvested for biomedical purposes moving forward? I think we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, right? I don't want to be in the position right now of predicting the future of the species rebounds. The objective is for the species to rebound. So we're hoping that that's exactly what's going to happen, David. But the other part of the equation is the struggle for the horseshoe crabs and habitat loss. So we don't think we're going to be able to recreate habitat for them. But what we can do is reduce the harvesting. Will the species rebound to a point where the populations are not just good, but are healthy? I hope so, but I don't know that. And we're willing to look at future options if or when that occurs. Well, we've been speaking with Adrienne Esposito. She's the executive director of the Citizens Campaign for the Environment. Adrienne, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And we're really hoping the governor uh, signs this bill. We need her to support uh, this species. And listen, as I said, it's crawled around the earth for 50 million years. I think it deserves some more time on our planet. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by Beyond Plastics, which supports the Packaging Reduction and Recycling Infrastructure Act, working to cut plastic packaging in half. Plastics that cannot be recycled end up burned in incinerators, buried in landfills, or polluting rivers and the oceans. More information at beyondplastics.org.